This is the kind of topic that differs from group to group. So often we want to be friendly and professional and end up in an entirely different court. Some clients friend us on Facebook, others only contact us after we have sent them the results of the investigation. Sometimes you feel that there should be a client blacklist, <laughs> essentially a statewide list to tell other investigation groups that if the clients lists them, they should decline due to reasons of fakery, animosity, or other reasons that might put the group in danger or damage their reputation. Unfortunately, there are people out there who bring in a paranormal team just for the attention or to attempt some sort of a sensationalist fakery to get some fame. It's out there. Dealing with clients is an art form and a combination of group dy dynamics, caution, and all kinds of good manners. Often it takes nothing but a gentle word of assurance that you'll do your best, but sometimes the claims are so out there that you wonder if you're being played. This is where you simply do your job and conduct a thorough investigation and rely on nothing but the evidence you capture. People make super wild claims, and it's best to keep a level head rather than to believe their, those claims. Yes, your client may be genuinely terrified, but if you cannot gather proof of their claims, perhaps it is easier to let them believe it and just do your best. Often a client will take your personal experience as proof that he or she is not crazy and their claims verified, not taking into account that most paranormal groups only fully rely on EVP, video or photos, and a large dose of debunking. Sometimes you find a client with real concerns who is simil similar to you in thought, hobby, and personality. You decide to go beyond simple networking and try and become friends with them. I must tell you that while sometimes it works, other times it turns into a problem in and of itself. They try to get you into things that you're not sure you want to get into, and you speak your mind only to get shunned. I had this happen recently, but while I can't name names, this person ended up deleting and blocking not only me, but all the other members she had friended on Facebook, even though they hadn't done anything at all. I was the one who had pointed something out that they didn't like to hear, but they freaked out and just batch deleted us. If this happens, shake your head and move on. That kind of thing can mean some bad business for your team, but thankfully that didn't happen to us in the course of that particular incident. You need to be careful where you make your social connections in conjunction with your investigations. From here on out, I've decided to mostly avoid social connections with clients past, present, or future. I think it's fine to help, help them connect to your Facebook page should your team have one, and communicate by those means if they have any problems in the paranormal vein, but sometimes trying to be actual friends with a client just does not work for many reasons that are mostly not your fault. OPR maintains relationships with clients who head up public places, such as libraries and historical monuments that we have investigated in the past and may investigate again in the future. For example, the Squirrel Cage Jail in Iowa is about to become a repeat investigation. The relationships, however, are always professional. We do upload and keep evidence stored on the website for visitors to view, so, of course, that serves as publicity for the place in question. Sometimes we are referred to other public places and are contacted through our website for investigations because we have come recommended. It feels really good to be held in high esteem. Often it is up to the director or founder and case manager to build up a good relationship with clients. However, investigators are involved directly and should make a point to talk to clients in a very professional manner. Every interaction with clients should be conducted professionally. Sometimes you must make modifications in direct relationship to relatability. For example, if you're discuss discussing paranormal experiences with a child of five who is a little shy, you must attempt to get down to his or her level. It can be scary for them, especially if they are in the main target or in person experiencing the paranormal activity. Kids are more likely to experience paranormal activity because they have not yet fully closed their minds to the possibilities around them. They have easy, easier clairvoyance and can often communicate with spirits better than any adult simply because they accept the sights and sounds around them with no hint of skepticism or even fright. They simply accept it on sight, not thinking or often caring that it is real or not real, natural or supernatural, normal or paranormal. 
Adults, on the other hand, are an entirely different animal and often antsy because they are already being called crazy. Despite years of skeptic style upbringing, they are beginning to believe in the paranormal because it's happening to them. And yet, they don't think they should be believing in it because of how they were brought up, were taught, or what society thinks. Some people are brought up in more open-minded, open-thinking types of families, and so they aren't closed down to new thoughts or experiences, especially when it comes to the unseen. You need to gauge where they are in their beliefs, gauge where they are in believing themselves, believing their own experiences and how they are dealing with it. This is where your expertise will come in. As a paranormal investigator, while your biggest job is to capture and debunk paranormal phenomena, you are also helping clients not be afraid. You are helping them find a way to cope with the things that keep them up at night, the things that their children see and are afraid of. You are giving them the empowerment tools and ways to take control of the situation. Whether you actually find evidence of a haunting or find that it's just a faulty air system or whatever else, you are giving them things that last beyond this particular investigation. Professionalism, reassurance, empowerment, and tools to debunk, these things are the best things you can give your clients. If you suspect that they are sensitive, you can talk with them about it, but be gentle and open to their own beliefs. Give them some resources and they can go farther if they so choose. In this field, sometimes it's hit or miss, but it's up to you and your team to make sure that every investigation adds to the credibility of both your team and the paranormal field itself. Um, no pressure or anything, guys.